Miss Roberts, did it ever happen before that so many thousands of rounds of ammunition were fired into the dormitories in such a short period of time? It happened many times before here. Kent State, the Orange Grove Massacre. 27 kids were shot at that one. Or Jackson State or Houston. Any one of a dozen others. Students are slaughtered by trigger-happy police types and nothing is ever done about it. Besides Billy Jack, who else was shot? How many were actually killed? There were three deaths. And two still on the critical list. Washington replied to your request for an investigation. Are you kidding? Remember after Kent State, our Attorney General John Mitchell said that there was no need to explore the causes of the killings because he knew in advance the causes couldn't possibly be the National Guard or the police. But didn't an FBI report subsequently prove that there were no shots fired by the students and that there was grave culpability on the part of the Guard? They sure did. But as usual, Washington did nothing about it. Does this mean, then, that it's the end of the school? Do you have to close it down now? Maybe. Maybe not. I honestly don't know at this point. I'm sorry, folks. Miss Roberts is very tired. You're going to have to leave. 
Thank you. My publisher still thinks that it's vital that a book be done about your school and how the massacre happened there. I wouldn't know where to begin. Maybe you could start with the arrest of Billy Jack. Wasn't it what happened at the trial that made you so determined to make the school succeed? Yes. That was, what, four, four and a half years ago. Wasn't Billy Jack's main belief that a man who doesn't go his own way is nothing? That's right. That's why they tried Billy. But we all knew what they were really trying was each man's right to find his own center, to follow his own conscience, and to do his own thing without hurting or interfering with anybody else's. That ideal, to all of us, was Billy Jack. What you're saying, then, is that it doesn't make any difference to you whether this jury finds you innocent or guilty. And it doesn't make any difference to you whether you live or die. And do you expect us to believe that you have absolutely no fear of the death penalty? I have a lot of fear. But I have a lot more respect. Long ago, I learned that he's my constant companion. He eats with me, he walks with me, he even sleeps with me. I'm sorry, I, I must have missed something back there. Who is this faithful companion of yours? Death. Oh, I see. Well, tell me, does this, uh, is this death companion business some special part of your Indian beliefs? No. Every one of us is death is his constant companion. He sits with every one of us every second of our lives, only we're too terrified to really think about that. But once you do, It'll completely change your entire outlook on life. Well, how so? You ask yourself, even in the most serious crisis, how important would this really be if I were suddenly told that I just have one more week to live? So you learn to take nothing too seriously. On the other hand, you ask yourself, if this were my last act on Earth, is this what I really want to do? So you learn, on the one hand, to be detached from the temporary things of this world, and on the other hand, you learn to appreciate every little thing in it all the more. During the trial, Sheriff Cole resigned, and Posner, who never really quite recovered from the death of his son, sold out all of his companies to his brother, the banker, and he quietly left town. And though we were happy about it then, it turned out to be one of the worst things that ever happened to us. The prosecution, for its part, savagely attacked our character and tried to make it look like I wasn't even raped. So Miss Garrison lies, and you swear to it. Objection. Sustained. Now, Miss Roberts, isn't it true that you were never raped? Isn't it true that you made up this story in a desperate attempt to try and justify the violent and insane killing by the man you love? Objection. <laughs> I feel terribly sorry for your children, Mr. Williams. You feel sorry for my children? Yes, and you too. You know me. And you know I don't lie. It must be terribly degrading for you to pretend in front of all of these people that I do just to earn your money. Yes, I was proud to go through West Point. I was taught there a code of honor and manliness that though it went overboard at times, I basically liked. Yet you brought charges against your own officers, including two staff commanders and a general. That's right. I charged them with the deliberate and senseless slaughtering of innocent women and children in the field, either directly or by men under their command, and by failing to report these atrocities or covering them up with full knowledge of same. And after you preferred these charges, the Army suddenly made up charges against you of cowardice in the field and they offered to drop these charges against you if you would drop them against the officers. That's correct. And did you refuse to drop the charges? 
I did refuse. Could you please tell us in your own words exactly what led up to your refusing to obey this order in the field? Was it before or after my lie? It was about seven months before my lie. We were out on a search and destroy mission on a small South Vietnamese hamlet. And just like at my lie, there had been plenty of advanced warnings, so when we got there, there was no resistance, no military in sight, not a shot was fired. All the village was filled with was women, children, and old men. They were frightened and very eager to please, so we quickly herded them up into a ditch. And we sat around, waiting for several hours for some word from headquarters as to what we would do with them. The people, in the meantime, were kept in the ditch in the boiling sun and were not allowed to relieve themselves or go for any water. Get them in the ditch! Way down to the end. Get them up. There must be some mistake. There's no mistake, sir. The order was perfectly clear. Get me headquarters on the phone again. Give me that phone. I want to hear it myself. If you fellows refuse, all hell can break loose. You know that. Are you absolutely sure, sir? There can be no mistake down the line. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. Waste them. You mean the civilians? That's the order. Clear as hell. Direct from Saigon. We're to waste them. Disobey this order, and they can hang you. Lock and load! was his senseless slaughter and sadistic brutality coming as official orders from Washington that turned you against America? No, not really. In war, when you've brainwashed men to become cold-blooded killers, you expect them to kill. Then what was it that made you bitter toward America? Lieutenant Kelly. Lieutenant Kelly. You mean because he was tried for war crimes at my life? No, he should have been tried. And so should all those colonels and generals and White House aides who ordered the whole affair, but were mysteriously let off scot-free. Then why Lieutenant Kelly? Because America made him into such a great hero. To me, they were sick and diseased men filled with evil, who cut innocent women's throats and blew out the brains of babies, and America had raised him up and made him a national idol. What was that part about the president switching his colors? On December 8, 1969, every newspaper in this country carried President Nixon's sacred promise that he would personally investigate my ally, and he would personally see to it that everyone involved, if they were found guilty, was punished to the full limit of the law. And so you feel that since every other officer involved to date has gone free, Nixon failed his pledge? Like any other mealy-mouthed, sell-out politician, when he found out that he could get more votes by supporting Kelly. He did a complete flip-flop. And when I saw that the American people supported him in this, I knew then that the American conscience was dead. 
and that the great spirit of this nation, which to me began back in Boston, Virginia, during the American Revolution, that it could never again be revived. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a decision? We have, Your Honor. We, the jury, unanimously find Billy Jack guilty of involuntary manslaughter. <laughs> You'll find that the end of your little school out there, Doc. Well, it's not my school, but um, I'll take a bet on it. Billy Jack wasn't the center of power of that school. Who then? Jean? Oh, uh, to prove something for Billy, she's going to make that place grow and grow. My, it's going to take off like a brush fire. That quiet little girl? That quiet little girl, my butt. That's like saying a, a rattlesnake's got a quiet little bite. For all our sakes, I hope you're wrong. Respecting your good intentions, Doc, when people have such widely different attitudes, there's no way they're going to live together without generating violence. We've all had too much of that already. So, though the trial of Billy Jack as a person was over, and he was sentenced from five to 15 years in the state penitentiary, the kids decided that Billy Jack was really kind of a symbol to live by. And the trial of Billy Jack as that kind of an ideal had just begun. So they immediately set out to make the school bigger and better than ever before. That first year that Billy was in prison, they found an old abandoned military academy, which they renovated entirely by themselves, begging, borrowing, and scrounging everywhere they could for money or materials to make it go. Listen, everybody, y'all. The entire school was built and owned by the kids, and they governed themselves on the simple philosophy that where there's power, there can never be love, and where there is love, there's no need for power. Knowing that you can't really deal and understand other people until you first understand yourself. Every program was based on learning how to cope and understand your own feelings first in order to understand and relate to other people. This philosophy they carried into everything from meditation and body awareness exercises, all kinds of dance, even belly dancing, music, band, drill team, arts, crafts, advanced physics, mathematics, psychology, the classics, even into athletics, which they called yoga athletics, from yoga tennis to yoga football and every sport in between. The idea always being that the thrill of participating in the self-discipline one developed while training, preparing and learning made one a winner for the rest of his life, no matter how well he played or how the temporary contest came out. And so winning and losing or worrying about someone grading your efforts was just not all that important anymore. Growing and having the fun and privilege of doing it, that was everything. I heard something about taking the grant that was given as part of the deal for Billy Jack's surrender and then building a radio station or a recording studio or something like that. That's right. They went out and sold their own recordings door to door, and the royalties really helped the school to continue to grow. At last the day is here. of the royalties, they started an institute for child abuse and children's rights. 
And in working with these abused and orphaned children, they were stunned to find out what was secretly going on in children's orphanages and juvenile courts, state institution for disturbed and retarded children, children's hospitals, and education in general. Was that when they started their Nader-type newspaper and magazine? and then began those scorching exposés on government corruption and consumer rip -offs. That's right. And it was in doing those exposés that our troubles really began. We've been digging. You, know, you remember back in December of 73 when the, uh, the Interior Department you know, called in, was it 250 oil executives yeah. to yeah. work on fuel allocation, right? Wow. So we started digging behind that, and we found out that the oil barons and the White House manipulated the whole energy crisis, including the Israeli war. Right. Just, just unbelievable profits. It makes the Alaskan pipeline look like kid stuff. But are you aware what could happen? I mean, that could blow the dome off the Capitol. I mean, we had the FBI, the CIA, the plumbers, the plumbers, plumbers, the sequel to the plumbers. It'd be a tremendous blow. You know what they can do? If we don't tell our sources, they can arrest us. You know, just like that. He's absolutely right. I mean, it happened. In 72, the LA Times spent $200,000 in legal fees defending their reporters who were subpoenaed to reveal their sources. I mean, that's the LA Times. We don't stand a chance. They're either going to blow us up all together, they're going to... They're just going to close the school yeah, down. I, well, I want to do an expose on the IBM ribbon no, conspiracy. No, no, no. <laughs> the fantastic Rita response made the kids determined to bring these exposés to a wider public. So they decided to build their own TV station. They put on a 4th of July type fundraising drive, which they called 1984 is Closer Than You Think. And it culminated in the largest drill team and band marathon ever held in this country. The kids came from all over the U.S. and Canada at their own expense. And every day and night, the donated coliseum was filled. Just pull it down. Hurry up. You're on next. Wanting to love you, not wanting you to know. Billy got out of prison. No, it was just before. I remember because Ford had just shocked the nation by pardoning Nixon and agreeing to let him destroy the tapes. We were all so angry at the way politicians at every level of government constantly used television to lie, con, and manipulate people. Oh, I know. I covered a candidate in California once who had campaign contributions from the oil companies. Would you believe he dared to advertise himself as the one the oil companies feared the most? That's right. And because of things like that, the kids decided to fight fire with fire before it was too late. Well, I mean, look at how they packaged Nixon as the law and order candidate who would bind the nation's wounds and bring us all together. Well, we all bought it. <laughs> That's right. So the kids decided to use television to fight television before it was too late and they took their investigations being done in the magazines right into the streets where the public could see for themselves the secret deals and ripoffs right where they were happening so in other words miss childs you missed one payment while you were in the hospital no i missed three payments i was behind before i went into the hospital okay so you missed three payments and then they repossessed your furniture if you make up the payments you would find that they destroyed your furniture and repossessed it. And now they refuse to refund the money to you on which you had paid on it two years before they repossessed it. Now, is that correct? Honey, that's correct. 23 years in this town doing a hell of a job, just following orders, and because of one crazy nigger, I'm dead. It's not the woman. It's that school and their TV station. I think the manager's gonna come out here on camera, too. Okay, all right. Excuse me. Um, we think as assistant manager that we should have uh, the store side of the, of the story so that we could have all of the uh, viewpoints presented fairly. May we have a comment? No comment. We were just trying to be fair, sir. Oh, now. We tried. Oh, join in. Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, just a minute, please. A telephone, Mr. Bromner. It's, it, it's the home office. Well, yes, sir. Well, thank you, sir. That's a tough situation.
right. Well, I just went according to the manual, sir. Right away. Replace the old lady's furniture. With used furniture? With brand new. It just hit the wire services. Those crazy, lousy kids. What did they think? I wanted to take the old lady's furniture? It was shortly after that that they started bugging our phones and the FBI started making mysterious and routine calls to the school, pretending that it was for clearances for the federal grants that the government had been giving us ever since Billy Jack surrendered. I guess it was at that point that I really should have realized and made the kids stop. Did you have any proof that your phones were being bugged? Yeah, one of the kids, uh, a graduate of Caltech, I think, not only developed a device which could tell us when our phone was being tapped, but he and another couple of electronic geniuses developed a lie detector that was even more accurate than the polygraph machine. I don't get it. How does it yeah. work? Yeah. Well, just by a person's voice alone, off the telephone or off the television, it's even more accurate than the normal lie detector. Oh. I don't believe it. Well, watch the, watch the thing. Watch the needle. And so it is your contention, then, Governor, that the threat of exposure by the Freedom School television station will in no way find any wrongdoing or kickback of this federal money ever touching the state capitol? As God is my judge, Mr. Mudd, if there are a stack of Bibles on this table before me, I swear to you that I have absolutely no knowledge of any kind of corruption by any member of my staff. Not one. Oh, wow. Wow. machine would do to the advertising industry. It'd just blow it apart. Uh, Think yeah. of what we could have yeah. saved on the Watergate hearing. Yeah. 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 I've got an idea. Why don't we get the tapes of the Watergate hearings and running off on this thing and finally find out the truth? Uh -huh. <laughs> Pardon me, Mrs. Merrick. Uh, we're from the FBI. I'm what, uh, We'd just like to ask you a few routine questions about your child. Something wrong? No. Uh, uh, does she go to the Freedom School yes, up here? Yes, sir. You know about the uh, TV station yes, that they operate? Yes, sir. Does she have anything to do no. with that? No, she doesn't. Now, during all this time Billy was in prison, now, did you visit him regularly? No. Billy's humiliation at being caged up like an animal was so great that he wouldn't let any of us visit him, ever, for all four years. Didn't you miss him? Terribly. Buddy wrote to me every day, and that helped keep me going. Except every time the mail came, I held my breath, hoping he hadn't given them an excuse to extend his sentence or even kill him. Have the doctors told you if you'll be able to walk normally again? Of course she'll be able to walk normally again. So you really didn't think they'd let Billy out of prison alive? No. Not even if they had to shoot him when he was going through the gates on parole. But you remember that day when he got out? I sure do. It was the day we had our first international seminar on child abuse. Child abuse? Yeah. The kids had done an expose on child abuse. Child battering. And how widespread it is here in this country. Pretty soon, we became recognized as one of the few places that could successfully help parents who battered their children. Okay. Uh -uh. This is our one-to-one -one type therapy. Almost all of it's done by lay therapists. Our kids here at the school. Was the boy born without his hand? No, his father cut it off in a fit of rage. A horrible history of torture. All of our professional staff has pretty much given up on him. Only Carol refuses to take no for an answer. Oh, you don't really think she'll succeed. You obviously don't know Carol. Okay, tough monkey. Time to shower up for the press. away from freedom. 
Go ahead, give me one of those fancy kicks. Now, Indian buck, move out. So in summary, then, you're saying to love those that we find really despicable, that we really can hate. And I can really hate these people that cut off the fingers and beat their children. And somehow in the experience of loving them, they're going to change before our eyes and, and stop beating their children. That's it exactly. As you know, in a normal parent-child relationship, the parent is there to supply the child's needs. But in the case of the child abuser, the parent is so desperate for love, he expects the child to fulfill his needs. Well, when the child can't do it or is incapable or for whatever reason, the parent ends up beating him. I'm sure some of you have experienced this, say, of some parents that have watched their children in Little League. We find that one child usually becomes a scapegoat. It's usually the child most resembling the parent doing the abusing. You know, when you think about it, there are many, many kinds of child abuse. But it's only when it breaks out in physical violence that we recognize it as something horrible. Dr. Roberts, your complete claim, then, is that by loving these battering parents, instead of punishing or confining them, that that actually works in stopping further beating of their children. Absolutely. You're involved in child abuse, and I'll bet you're using some form of punishment, threat, or maybe even jailing, I don't know. Now, you know your cure rate is less than 25%. Ours, on the other hand, is over 90. Dr. Dr. Roberts. I'm so sorry. No, I beg your no, pardon. Go ahead. No. The whole fate of the human race depends upon our ability to handle and recognize normal aggression and the hostility in us. Now, have you thought about applying this to other areas of our society? Yes, as an example, this entire school here is built upon the same principle. And we would fervently like to try it in other areas. What Jean has really taught us here and in the Child Abuse Center is that everyone has inside of them a fantastic force, and it can really change people once it's unleashed. So that's where the school gets its pacifism? I'm sorry, I just can't stomach that word pacifism. Because when people hear that we're pacifists, they automatically feel we're sitting around waiting and sometimes even retreating from life. Whereas we feel the thing that we've got here is a living, dynamic, positive force that has the ability to change the most warped lives, turn on the most confused and lost people, and I think we all literally feel here that it could possibly rebuild the world. Is this what you call nonviolence? No, I'm sorry. We call it by something much cornier than that. We call it love. Can any of us go along? No. Billy, there's a big press contingent waiting for you up in my office. And I think it would be a good idea for you and me to get together and talk about what we're going to say. That it? Billy, it would be to everyone's advantage if you would cooperate with Warden Sells. He's a hardhead. He'll be back.
You're not little Carol and Sunshine. Billy, Carol wrote a tune, uh, especially for you when you went away. And I think we should hear it about right now. Yeah. Why don't we all kind of be quiet and let's, you know, listen to this tune. Right. Shed a tear running dear, don't turn back, Billy Jack. I am crying, are you dying just for me? Whenever trouble came about, I could feel you coming out. You were there, I could feel you in the air. When anyone had a happy moment to share, you were there. When anyone had a Shed a tear running dear, don't turn back, Billy Jack. I am crying, are you dying just for me? When they took you from the church, I couldn't bear to watch a town stare. You aren't an animal, you're a man. It wasn't fair, it just wasn't fair. And they tried you for murder. They said you were guilty, it just wasn't fair. Wanted to tell them they were unjust. I didn't dare, I could only stare. What will happen to you now? You've got to live, but I don't know how. I am crying, are you dying just for me? Shed a tear, running dear, don't turn back. I know that, but what are you doing in it? What do you mean by that? <laughs> it's just funny. I'm sorry. Such a timid, squeaky, clean little mouse. to learn something to keep from being attacked. Think of all those men out there who like to get their hands on their sexy little body. <laughs> Think of all those men out there who like to get their hands on 
her sexy little body. <laughs> Here, let me help you. All I care about right now is my own body. My God, you broke my back. Billy, I'd like you to meet Mr. Han from Korea, the hop keto master here in the United States. How do you do? You have a Diana of hearing with your kicks in Korea. Thank you. Is it true? Do you really can do jumpers pancakes? After you. I guess. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Would you like to try it? After you. The only ones I know who can do that. Thank you very much. Running Deer and his two sons have been lost for almost a week in that snowstorm up in the Taos Mountains. Blue Elk wants to know if any of our skiers or any of the kids from the survival program can go up and search. How about the rescue patrol, Blue Elk? Have they been notified? Well, well we well, the highway patrol and the ranger station, they don't give a damn when Indians are involved. At the ranger station, all they could tell us is that he's probably out drunk someplace, and they refuse to help us. Okay. I'll get the sheriff. Carol, you go get some of the kids in their winter gear. Okay. And tell them to dress warm, because it's a terrible blizzard up there. This family's been starving for weeks. The father and the two sons went out after deer, and they're probably lost in that storm up on Independence Ridge. See if you can get a chopper in the Latigo Canyon. If not, try to get someone to ski down the other side of Independence. Over.
down and getting a weak signal that keeps uh, fading and cutting out, and it could be coming from the other side of these peaks. So uh, let's uh, let's go have a look, huh? Alive? Just barely, and I can't get anybody on this thing. No, you never will with these peaks. Can you get below this storm down over an Independence Ridge? Go. they told me to do with him. Well, he goes down to City Hospital. Bundle him up good and go with him in the ambulance. Ambulance? Where are you taking him? Down to the Indian Hospital. Well, that'll waste time. Why not treat him here? I wouldn't do it if I thought it were dangerous. You mean you can't even keep an Indian here one or two days in an emergency? Look, I'm just an intern. I don't make the rules. Well, you're not going to move him. He could lose a hand or a foot. Well, tell me, what would you do if he were a white man and you could treat him? Well, I pack his extremities and start him on some vasodilator IVs. Show me. You could be arrested for making me do this. You know that. Dr. Now. What the hell is going on here? Vasodilator IVs for each one. Come on, doctor. I'll take the responsibility. Bring those packs over here and start applying them to their lower legs. Now take the hands and raise them up. Come on, doctor, move! My client, Running Deer, wishes to have it entered into the record that it is his position that the Indian is a member of a sovereign nation and is not subject to the laws of this land and this state, and that therefore this court has no jurisdiction. So, Andrew. Your Honor, insofar as the defendant is still hospitalized and, in addition, has suffered the severe personal hardship of the loss of his oldest son, the state petitions the court for leniency and pleads for a lesser sentence. Hey, don't rip your pants, Buster! <laughs> in view of the voluntary pleading and the personal hardships encountered, the court reduces the mandatory sentence for trespassing and illegal hunting of deer from one year minus a day in jail to 10 days in the county jail. <laughs> and a period of probation to be not less than one year. headquarters that we don't need any more I help. I demand to know what's going on here. Look, lady, mind your own business. Get back in your car. This is my business. These are my students. Now tell me what's going on. Lady, they were disturbing the peace. We got a report of possession. We're just checking it out. Now I suggest you stand back or I will arrest you for interference. You just try oh, it. Hey, they can't search you unless they've got a warrant. All right, Park, move it out. I got every right to stand here. I'm a citizen. Well, so am I, Park. Now move it out. without a warrant. Tell them so out loud and they'll be in contempt of court. What the hell do you think you're doing? 
your choice, lady. You can do as you're told or get your head split open. Listen, Buster, you're not gonna feel me up. I'll search you right here or in the paddy wagon. It's your choice. Jim, you're out of line. I'll knock it off. Well, hey, hell, my dear. You can fill me up right here in the bus or the lawn, anywhere you want to do it. Well, can't win them all. Hey, we've got a tough monkey here. Feels you don't have to move off like the others. Okay, mister. You were ordered to disperse. And that means now. Somebody else need a lesson? Yeah. Our tough monkey here. Say it then. alienation and guardianship, the government has the right to sell, trade, or give away all the Indian land to whomever it pleases. Yeah. Which are usually their friends who put up campaign funds. And under guardianship, they control our water, they control our plumbing, they control our worship, they control our land, and they control our money. They control every damn thing in our lives. Mr. Strump, as our agent, we want to know what you're going to do. What the Congress declared was a bill giving you self-determination. Ah, Congress is a bunch of filthy, rotten, lying thieves. And to get some industry in here by either leasing or selling this land, which isn't worth a damn to anybody anyway. No. If it isn't worth a damn, why the hell are all these oil companies and mining interests so eager to get their hands on it? We'd like to know, Agent yeah. give us those statistics which show how many jobs will be provided for here on the reservation by these people. That's not Yellow Hawk. That's little Uncle Tommy Hawk. He's what Crazy Horse called a loaf around the fort. He's a bought and paid apple, and you know it. It happens every time you radical activists come in here. Yeah. You pay off everything and then you skip out. And it's the children and those of us that are left behind that have to stay and take the beating. My father was a tribal chairman. And my grandfather was a man of medicine for many years. And I'm an activist. Hey, he doesn't mean you, Blue Elk. He means me. And me. And in a sense, he's right. They do have to put up with pressure every day. They control our health. How's it going? Well, not very good, I'm afraid. And you know who the trustee is. It's Posner's First National Bank in this state, and he's got $80 million of Indian money in his trust. I thought we were here to discuss running deer, to get the tribal permission to use him as a test case for international law before the world court. Yeah. Yeah. We've got names, we've got dates and exact amounts, and we're going to bring it out in international court. A person could get killed with foolish talk like that. Many of us already have been. Because if they can't buy us out with scholarships or grants, 
They kill us. Right. Yeah. Well, what happened? They voted it down. And that damned yellow hawk could probably get a personal invitation to the White House for that. I don't understand. How in the world did they keep him in line so? They caught him embezzling funds, and the White House promised to hush it up if he'd cooperate. You know, the same old story. Why don't you guys take Running Deer's case to World Court just by yourself? I mean, you don't have to bother with all these committee and tribal decision things. Well, that just divides us by having Indian fight an Indian. You know, divide and conquer. That's the way that they've always beaten us. Now, that's your whole problem right there. Hmm? What? You got all chiefs and no Indians. God, that is so bad. I can't even believe it. That is really poor. That is really bad. If it's illegal for an Indian to go out and hunt deer, how come it's all of a sudden legal for you and your bunch? Because it's deer hunting season, and we've all got our licenses, that's why. Not on Indian land, it isn't. Not for you, anyway. It's still illegal. Carl, this is no longer Indian reservation land. It's all been terminated. Oh, the Indians won't accept that. Besides, this land's sacred to them. There'll be trouble. We do this every year, Carl. You know that. Yeah, but you don't lock up a starving Indian every year. Tempers are still pretty hot over that one. Carl, on this bus, we've got corporation presidents, Pentagon officials, Washington politicians, and even the lieutenant governor. You big ignorant pig. Who are you calling a pig? I'm calling you a pig. With all of those big wheels back there, do you expect me to go say, sorry, we gotta all go home? Women and children are afraid to move out of their homes for water. Yeah. Yeah. Who is it they're shooting? What are you talking about? Running deer couldn't even kill a deer to feed his starving family. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Indians have to go hungry. But these trophy hunters, they come in here and do as they damn please. Yeah. And kill all the deer they want. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The question is, what are we going to do about it? Let's run them out. I think we should take some cameras and go down and take some pictures of them and their call girls in the nude and turn them into the newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. Better than that. Better than that. Let's set them to their wives. All right. Yeah. God, we've got a right to hunt on Indian land. Yeah. 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 That's what the law students were trying to tell you before. That's no longer Indian land. That's part of the reservation that they've been quietly terminated for our own good. No. No. Not to me, it isn't. Right. What is that supposed to mean? I never voted for termination. Did anybody in this room ever vote for termination? No! Do you know of any tribal member who knowingly voted for termination? No! And to me, they're still illegally on Indian land, and this tribal council has the authority to arrest them and drive them out. Right. What do you mean, arrest them? Who's going to do it? I will. The tribal police? Or anyone in this room who's man enough to go with me? Or tell me something. Are you afraid to stand up to the white man even when he's shooting at your wives and your children? <laughs> Me and my rifle could be any place you say within half an hour. All right. Yeah, the third column is the International Symposium on the Law and the American Indian Legal Rights. And let me tell you guys something. The real purpose of this is to make it look like everybody's stealing from the Indians. Oh, come on, Posner. I've handled dozens of land sales of Indians, and even I don't know what termination is. Do you? <laughs> look, these radical Indians are taking payoffs on all sides. Uh, who cares? As long as they don't terminate my lease. I've only got 92 more years for it to run. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sure as hell better hope that conference never takes place, because if it does, we're all in for a lot of surprises.
It's your gun. You sentence our brother running deer to jail for killing a deer to feed his starving children. And yet you dare to come here and do this? What do you call this sport? I was wrong. I'll correct that injustice to the Indian. Well, tell me, just how are you going to do that? He's already spent 10 days rotting in your lousy jail like a caged animal. I'll give running there a job, a good job. More money than he could possibly earn. Because he's an Indian? And you got one pay scale for your whites and one for your Indians? Oh, come on now. Don't be childish. All of you, you are all illegally trespassing on Indian land, and you are all going to be tried by us, here and now. If this is a tribal decision, where's Yellow Hawk and Little Bear? Probably back home sucking up your spit. Billy. I'm Lieutenant Governor Barnes. This is George Shipley. He's the president of Stonehurst Mining Company. This isn't Indian land. After it was terminated, we purchased a leasehold on it. My company holds the rights to it, and these men are here as my guests. How many days after the president signed that termination bill did your company get your leasehold? Oh, I, got, I can't remember. I don't see that has any bearing. How many days? The day after termination was signed. And how much money did you just happen to contribute to the secret campaign fund? $125,000. What did you say your name was? My name is George Shipley. I'm president of the Stonehurst Mining Company. You know, Shipley, I think I'll just kill you right where you stand. We've made a terrible mistake, and you've got the upper hand for now. Take advantage of it, and all you'll do is fan the flames of hatred higher. And then later on, all of us here, somehow, we'll get even. Trying us isn't going to solve anything. Blue Elk, Rolling Thunder, I know we don't think much of each other, but we're realists. Now what the lieutenant governor has to say is true. He may feel good now, but... You're going to suffer later. All right. We'll not try you now. We'll just take a good, clean picture of each and every one of you for future reference. OK, you heard him. I want two lines here, women to the front, men to the rear. And I want all the men to take off them hats now. Come on. Oh, you really gone too far this time, Billy. You're making a terrible mistake photographing those men. You know, the last time one of you Posners uttered that lousy cliché, one of you got killed. Now, tell me, don't you ever learn? You people back there, that means you too. Let's go. And I'll swear to God, you really gonna pay for this one. Take that hat off. I'm talking to you. Dean, how much more is gonna have to happen before you can get those kids to pull back on those exposés? Taking pictures of those people just infuriated them. It made matters much worse. I know that, Carl. But I can't tell the kids on one hand. I have complete confidence that they can govern themselves. And then, on the other hand, take it away when there's an important decision to be made. Either you decide to trust them on the vital decisions, or you don't. It's simple as that. Yes, but you can speak out, can't you? I mean, get up and present your point of view. I don't see why you can't argue against something you think is bad or destructive, as long as the kids have the right to vote it down if they don't agree with you. Yeah, I know, but oftentimes kids have a tendency to hero worship. And I just think if Billy or I got up and argued a point, some of these kids would just blindly follow because they identify with us so much. And I'm sorry, I just don't think that's fair. And what you're saying, then, is that when you get right down to it, you don't really believe they're adult enough to make their own decisions. Grandfather, I would be honored if you would teach me how to pierce the veil and go to that other world and make my own inward journey to find my own center. I would be honored, Grandfather, if you would teach me the way. There are many enemies in this world waiting to destroy you. 
If you are to survive, you will have to find peace in yourself first. That is why I want to make the inward journey. The inward journey is dangerous, filled with terrifying evil. There are many demons of great power. It takes much wisdom to learn that they are of your own making. And first, you must learn to see your own shadow. How will I learn to see my shadow, Grandfather? Many cannot survive the dangerous inward journey. But if you do, in time you will come face to face with your own shadow. Then you will know what I mean. I think I see it, Grandfather. Yes. I see it clearly now. What color is it? Dolkish. Blue. Dolkish. Bright blue. That is a spirit looking to see if you are worthy. It takes many forms. Where did it go? What is it? When you can tell me where the flame comes from, I will tell you where it goes when it goes out. Grandfather, where will I look for my shadow demon? We think the spirits live out there. But they and the shadow demon live inside you. He is all the evil in you that others can see in you, but you cannot. Why is that? We all put forth an image that we want other people to think we are, and that we'd like to think we are. But we all have the secret evil side that is painful to discover, though others can see it in us very easily. How can I come to know my evil side then, Grandfather? By the things in others that make you angry. Whenever you get upset at someone or something, it's because that quality that you're upset about really exists in you. It is always easier to see the evil in someone else, and by trying to change him, think you are getting rid of your own evil, your own shadow. It takes superhuman courage to see that this fault really exists in you, that what you're really hating and trying to change is a quality of yourself. Like the rugged man who hates long-haired youth. Underneath, he is secretly afraid of his own femininity. Grandfather, may I now descend to the cave of the dead? No, you are not yet ready. First, you must seek your own vision. When your heart is open, your vision will come. And only after you've received your vision would you have some chance to survive in the cave of the dead. Hello, Blue Rock. How long has Billy gone without food and water? Seven days now. And on the eighth, if he's worthy of it, his vision will come. But if a woman enters these sacred grounds, the medicine is lost. You'll have to go back. I'm sorry. What are you guys going to do when the women's lip here is about to? You'll have to take that up with the spirits. Jack, come, for I am going to show you the true nature of the white man through all of history. Come and look with me over this river of time. Look out. There's St. Augustine preaching the Christian creed of love to the Druid Britons with the tips of their lances dripping with blood. Oh, and there's King Richard the Lionhearted slaughtering the heathen until they convert to Christianity. Here you see the lie of that old romanticism you were taught about the Crusades as a boy. See how they butcher everyone in this village of Jews in the name of God and love. 
And remember that great, brave Indian fighter, Kit Carson? Well, he had rounded up over 400 Navajo women, children, and babies into this cave. And his men, bravely and methodically, shot them to death. What the white man calls the spread of civilization is Christianity and so-called democracy have a secret shadow, greed and power. Look well into your own heart, my brother. See how much of your violence comes from the same lust for power over other people. We've got names, we've got dates and exact amounts. We're going to bring it out in international court. A person could get killed through this talk right there. I don't know where she gets the patience. You've got to remember, Carol Dan, he's been in over 20 foster homes. And he was even put in solitary confinement in one of the detention homes when he was four years old. He's never known anything but mentality and rejection. I understand all that. But what can I do about it? Every single expert told me he's hopeless. Honey, we can keep loving him and loving him no matter what he does. But you've got to remember, he's going to have a hard time accepting that love because he's going to be afraid that he'll be torn away like everything else in his life because he's convinced he's so evil. So we just can never, never get mad at him. And more important, we just cannot give up loving him. Well, I'm not going to give up. What I want to know is, while we're doing all this loving, who's supposed to be loving us? I'll love you, honey. <laughs> this school has no legal right to detain the child. Now, if we have to find Danny's parents and get them to regain custody, we will. And if that doesn't work, we'll have him committed to a mental hospital. You'll do what? what? Any attempt by your group or Posner's group or any other group makes to attack this school through that child will be met by the finest lawyers and the most widespread publicity that money can buy. You're just trying to get back at us because we've exposed the filthy conditions of your state hospital. Why don't you go and clean them up so they're fit for human beings? You yeah. do that. We have evidence the child is unhappy here and is constantly going into fits of rage. Mister, you are so stupid. No, it's um, Harry, Harry, this is not Harry. constructive. Now, it's clear the dean is not going to give up the child without a legal battle. So, if you want to see it through, you're just going to have to take it to court. Fair enough. It should be too difficult to prove that uh, this environment is too radical an environment. Bring up a young child in. What you men are really saying is this constant harassment and this bugging of our telephones, it'll all magically stop if we decide to give up the Indian Rights Seminar. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I haven't any idea what you're talking about. And you I'm sure your phones any... aren't tapped. That's illegal without a court uh -huh. order. Well, would you go get Bugger and tell him to bring the machine here? Yeah. Sure. So you can just go back and tell whoever sent that they can just stop bugging our phones because we can knock out their bug anytime we want to. Is this phone now being tapped? Oh, yes, with an <laughs> infinity type that is picking up everything being said in this room from this phone without you even lifting up the phone receiver. So whenever we want to talk without anyone else listening in, we just call on Bugger. Bugger, hit the switch. You didn't turn this thing off, did you? Turn off what? I don't know. It's weird. It's gone black. I can't hear anything. Well, check your relays. Mr. Posner, allegations have been made that the $80 million trust that was given to you by the Indian Bureau for the land sale uh, was turned over to you as trustee instead of the bank in Wyoming. And this is because of your heavy campaign contributions in Washington. Look, that's ridiculous. I I'm not even aware of what campaign contributions that my executive committee decides to make. But I do know that they're made on a strictly impartial basis. Mr. Stevens, you 
have no friends at all in Washington. I mean, there isn't anybody up there. Well, I certainly... Or any I... heavy campaign contributions. Certainly I have friends in Washington, don't you? I have... Now, what can I do for you, Princess? Oh. Aren't you responsible for helping Eisenhower back in the 50s? Affect the transfer of uh, Indian Trust money to local banks here and throughout the state so that you could uh, invest it at a great personal profit? Oh, that, well, that's quite a long time ago, but uh, no, no, that's not true. Absolutely not. What does it say? What does it say? Basically, it says the man is lying through his teeth. What's that ticket? I'm picking up a strange ticking sound from the transfer. protecting the school. Something about fearing the kids coming in and retaliating. Oh, bull, that jack has to do anything for publicity. Well, as long as the laws work one way for the rich and one way for the rest of us, it looks like there's only one thing left for us to do. Go in at nighttime and bomb the hell out of it. The police won't help us, we know that. And we also know that our non-violence just gets us stopped. The only thing those racist pigs will ever understand is terror. Right. Wait a minute, minute Jocelyn. Why don't you quit using race as an excuse for your own neurosis? I don't think all these marches and protests and demonstrations accomplish anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at Wounded Knee. Yeah. Well, look at Wounded Knee. What was accomplished? Plenty. Frighten middle class people who see things changing so fast around them. Just when they're becoming humane and beginning to see that there is an injustice, they see violent demonstrations and flee like hell right back to where the politicians want uh, them. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Why don't we come up with something different? Something that we really want. To show the people in town we're not monsters and we don't go around clubbing people and throwing bombs. Uh -huh. Michelle, come on. King tried that approach and tell me where is he today? Oh, come yeah. on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's beside the point. You know it. The hell it is. I'm right on the point. Where's everything he's done or anybody else for that matter? That's right. They blew it off like they blew off his head. To go in and bomb now is not acting. It's reacting to what they've done to us. And the guy who's making you react is, in fact, controlling you. I agree with Michelle. Instead of reacting to them, why don't we just once go in and do what's good for us? I'd like to add something to that, if I might. Would you like to come up here and speak to to make our own decisions. Oh, no, this ruckus isn't getting you anywhere. But doesn't she have a say-so just like you do and she and she and she? Yeah, exactly. say so, say so. But she knows she's going to get up and make a speech that, that everybody in this room is going to follow blindly. <laughs> You may look either we decide or quote, Big Mama there decides for us to do right. it. Joanne, Joanne, Big Mama doesn't want to tell you what to do. She just had some thoughts she'd like to give. It's a crisis right now, and you're trying to tell us what to do? That violates everything that you've taught us to believe. Right. <laughs> about time. My God, at least someone's got common sense. What do you mean? Stopping these rides before they start. Thank God, at least we've got our governor with guts. Oh, come on, Blue Elk. We came all the way up here just to see Billy. Well, I can't help that. You can't see him now. This is a gathering of medicine men. Some of them are using smoke from religious herbs, and the others are purifying themselves for Billy's sacred journey. This whole mountain's closed. You mean they purify themselves just to take drugs? No, no. Only some do. 
And for them, the smoke of the medicine is a divine spirit. If one is not totally prepared to meet him, if one has not fasted or purified him oneself thoroughly, or if outsiders interfere, the spirit would be angry and make Billy sick or even take him away. Like when a kid is spaced off in stony land? No, no. You people don't know anything about the other world or about the powers that can so easily kill you. So unlike fools, you take drugs for kicks or to get high. You run a great danger. And when something happens, all you can talk about is mental illness or you describe it as suicide. Now, Lou, uh, Lou, we know all that, but when can we see him? Tomorrow morning, maybe. But you're going to have to wait halfway down the mountain. Now leave. All right, guys, come on. because there are many spirits there who would like to take you with them, and others who do not want to pass on to the next world, so they would like to enter and possess your body. The souls of these dead reek for vengeance, and they will know your heart. If it is that of a white man, you will not survive. I am ready, Grandfather. But there will be demons also. If you show any fear, they will tear you to pieces, and the ghosts will possess your soul. If you show you are not afraid, no matter what they do, the demons will stop terrifying you and become your friends. Are you afraid? You once taught me that courage is not the absence of fear, Grandfather, but the conquest of it. I am ready. Beware, most of all, the red-eyed demon. By his screams, you will know him. He is the most powerful of all the demons. And because he will do much good if you survive, he will kill you on the spot if you show any fear. Good luck. country, my friend. I know who you are, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I've got to go down the tunnel.
You are me. I am Louis Clown, your inner self. Someday, when you fully accept your fate and your death, then you will have me as your inner guide. But for now, you are to go to the desert and learn from the maiden. I'm sorry, I just can't understand all that's happening here. But that's your trouble. You always try to think and understand everything with your head instead of just feeling it with your heart. Now go and just experience what the maiden offers you. <laughs> Over here. Now, who are you? And where are we? I am here to show you the way to the house of the Great One. But first, you must prove yourself generous of heart. All right. I'm ready. Go and slap him in the face. And no matter what he does, do not strike back. And no matter what he does, I'm not to hit him back. That's right. You're gonna particularly like this. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. Why, you stupid son of a... Come on, what I can do that That man was on the lowest level and reacts only with animal instinct. Treated with violence, he was immediately pulled down to the violent animal level. No better than the man who hit him. And so he ends up being controlled by the animal in the man who hit him. Hit another. War of honor is something that went out in the Middle Ages. War today is nothing but e economic gain, economic gain for a few individuals in this country who control the top, top companies in this country. These companies go all the way to soft drink manufacturers, all the way to prepackaged foods. Excuse me a moment. Uh, this is gonna seem as stupid to you probably as it does to me, but... second level, he could not be pulled down to the level of the brute beast acting on physical violence, but was easily pulled away from what he was doing and lost control of his own center. So he too did not own his own soul, but could quickly be controlled by another. Once again, idea why I'm doing this. I feel sorry for you. Only a child thinks that being a man is being tough and violent. Someday you may learn that being a man has to do with self-discipline over one's time and one's emotion. With a deep and compassionate understanding for other people's feelings. has reached the third level, where he is his own person, so that no man can force him to react, thereby control his actions or take anything away from him. Well, what about the fourth level? Who told you of the fourth level? I don't know. Nobody told me about the fourth level. It just kind of popped into my head, that's all. Look, can I go to my spiritual guide now? You may never go to him. He comes when he wills. And as yet, you are not ready. I said, why not? I thought I just conquered my demon. You just met him and learned that your own worst demon is yourself. 
Your task now is to come to thoroughly know your shadow and accept it. And by accepting your weaknesses and human frailty, when your shadow has become your friend, then your spiritual guide will come for you. And only then will you be ready. Father, how is all of this happening to me? Look, we're worried because the kids at the school are just going to forget the whole thing and go off on one of their nonviolent love kicks again. Yeah, and all that'll happen is we'll get bombed again and more of our kids will get killed. Yeah, right. look, Billy, there's a whole group of us, Billy. We'd like you to lead us in, you know, hit them with a counterattack. Yeah, we could go in at night and bomb their TV station for a change hey, or kidnap hey, somebody yeah. from the town. Get yeah, all of yeah. them to fight back. Look, being strong is one thing, but bombing is another. Why? Why? It's not open? No, because it's the act of a sick coward. Oh, come on. Oh, well, what come the on. hell are we supposed to do? Just roll over and play dead? Yeah, Billy, right. how much can we take? Look, if I were a kid in the barrier or the ghetto today, and I had to grow up seeing my parents every day out of work, or I was lucky to get a two-hour bus ride into the city so they can make a few dollars cleaning up the white man's filth, and then return only to be insulted by the landlords, the teachers, and the police. Police? They're so damn corrupt. Really? All right, I know they are. And I I sure as hell would be tempted to go off and do things that would make the, the fanatic radicals look like kindergarten kids. Well, then well, come on, let's right. do it. Come on, Billy. There's nothing else we can do. Does that mean you're going to lead us in to bomb them back? Uh, yeah, come on, no, Billy. No, not in a million years. Why not, Billy? Really? Because that kind of violence never helps anybody or liberates anybody just gives some psychotic who's filled with a lot of self-hatred an excuse to kill a lot of innocent bystanders and maybe grab a lot of headlines by spouting some sophomoric slogans about class struggle. And the end result of the whole thing is it gives the law and order mentalities like Posner a chance to grab even more power. As far as what's going on back at the school, I think you kids are just gonna have to go back and decide all that for yourselves. Sounds like drums. Lieutenant, you better put the men out on alert. Sergeant, go out and see what the noise is.
It, Jerry, I've already called the tow truck, and they can't come out until morning. Send another bus. Oh, wait, a, wait a minute. I think maybe there's help coming. Yeah, someone's on their way. Russell, that's not help. Oh, Jerry? Jerry, something funny is going on. Call the sheriff. I don't think so. There's too many of them. I wouldn't have been over to I didn't think you guys piled it that high down here in your part of the county, huh? <laughs> but you know, the funny thing about being so big, Bill, is that a little girl like this luscious little belly dancer here, she could take you right off at the knees, just like that. Oh, is she going to use a buzzsaw? No, she wouldn't use a buzzsaw, just her knee. Her knee? She, she couldn't even get her knee up high enough. <laughs> didn't have to kick in the family jewels. What she would do is lift right down there inside the thigh. I'm sure. <laughs> and you know, not only that, but if she did it right, you would not only go down like a bomb, but she might even tear that muscle all the way down under the kneecap. You might even have to have surgery. Indian, you're full of karate crap. You know what? Well, I knew he was going to say that. I just knew you were going to say that. And I suppose that means that I will have to say to you that I'll have to show you, right? Huh, my guest. Well, I suppose that's our view, isn't it, Jason? Good luck. You know, that's one thing about you. You've always had such a generous heart, Jason. You don't mind at all that I... Oh, right here. Take him on. Sure. <laughs> Wonderful fellow. Wonderful fellow. Well, 
You can't say that I didn't warn you. Right? Right. And you can't say that I didn't warn you. Oh, no. You valuable man? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So-so? So-so? <laughs> That's all you are? Well, in any event, you can't say that I didn't warn you. Right. Right? Well, I suppose we're down to that time when there's really nothing left to do but show you, is there? Keep my guess. Association wants to know if you want to open the legal seminar or speak last. Last, after everyone else has gone home. What's the matter? Look who they said would never leave his room. Danny thinks he might like to have that thing now, wouldn't you, Danny? What thing? The thing that'll help his arm grab onto things. How in the world did you ever do it? Okay, almost, but you gotta put this here. Right like that. Oh, never mind. Yeah, you're willing to sing up on the platform like the rest of the kids. I'll be so embarrassed. Will I really get to play up there? Yeah, but you gotta work hard. Okay, ready? Really? Yeah, okay. I saw three ships. ships. Do you mean he's actually talking now? Yeah, with Carol, he's become a regular chatterbox. That's beautiful. Three ships. Jean, I hope this is going to end your Indian legal rights seminar. I know, I know. Not a mark on him and death back to Donald Well, what the hell did you expect? Yeah, a sign, courtesy of W.A. Posner and his friends from the CIA. The mass confusion over really what are the Indian rights makes it impossible for even Indian lawyers to grasp the laws that are mostly aimed at depriving him of 13 million acres of prime real estate in the United States. Let us now look closely at how these committees control the entire Congress and the entire spending so that 220 million people are totally controlled by the votes of four or five men. The traders are given a complete monopoly on the reservation by the Bureau. Prices are inflated, sometimes as much as a thousand percent. And when the little money that these people have is gone, the traders extend credit to them at interest rates usually falling between 48 to 75 percent annually. And the BIA parading their sellout Indians around before the public as a camouflage refuse to throw the traders off the reservation or to even regulate or in any way control them. And you tell me why? The only possible reason must be kickbacks tied in with the first national bank and Mr. Posner's trust funds. These again regulated by the BIA. And the people that are going to be the ones that are suffering are my people, the people that are on the grassroots level. Not the tribal councilmen, not the fat tribal councilmen with their government or tribal cars, not them. And for years, since I was a little girl, I've seen this go on amongst our own people, graft and corruption. I call you brother, but I have my hand in your pocket. She calls me sister. She has a knife in my back. We talk about unity, unity in the world and the government. Better start at home. Charity begins at home. And so in closing, please let us try and remember the overwhelming despair gnawing at every Indian 
and every other person in the United States, knowing that there is no longer any way he can directly affect the destiny of his country, and therefore he can no longer control his own life. You know, it's hard to believe that this country, which was started in a small corner of Virginia, where, even though the population was very small, God created such incredible people as James Monroe, James Madison, George Washington, Patrick Henry, George Wick, Peyton Randolph, George Mason, the unbelievable Thomas Jefferson, and many, many others. The question now is, whether that incredible spirit of those men which created this country is to be completely obliterated by the greed and corruption which exists at every conceivable political level, from the White House to the teeniest trading post on the Indian Reservation. Do you know that one word, just one word, could change the entire course of the American Indian legal destiny and thereby change the destiny for all of us here? And that is the word honest. That one word could change this government of special interest groups. Back to the spirit of Thomas Jefferson and Patrick Henry, which is a government of the people. Jefferson summed it all up in one phrase. The entire art of government is being honest. <laughs> to those of you who make peaceful evolution impossible, it is you, and only you, that will make violent revolution inevitable. A conservator is like a garland, young lady. If you hit me, you'll be in contempt of court. I'll do it. I swear to you, I'll do it. Now, get out! I'm taking the child. No, you're not! <laughs> What the hell do you think you're doing? I haven't discharged this patient yet. We petitioned the court to name me as conservator. Normally, I am a peaceful man, Carl, but if he's not out of this room by the time I turn around, I'm throwing this vile, decaying dung heap right through that window. Now, you get him the hell out of here! Until the court does appoint you conservator, this is illegal, Harry, and you know it. Now, come on. Let's go down the hall and talk this over. Don't you worry, honey. We're going to get him back to the school, huh? Obviously, that's a frame-up. But just as obviously, you can beat it. Unless someone else does something stupid. He's right. Come on, Grandfather. I'll go in with you. Hey, Blue Elk. Me, Jay. Got a minute? What's up? Well, uh, see, they asked me to come out here and see if maybe you want to come in for a little private talk. Maybe uh, we can do something about the old man. Who's they? Well, just, uh, they just told us to come out here and see if you'd be interested in a deal. Yeah, that's all. They just want us to yeah. come and get you. You wouldn't be playing any games, would you? Uh, now, look, if they if they don't want to hurt you, they'd have done it a long time ago. Yeah. What do you think? Hmm? If it'll help. Yeah. Why not? Well, Columbus took a chance, didn't yeah. he? There you go. Yeah. Look at what happened to the Indians. Right, just uh, go around the other side.
What in the world happened to you, Blue Hell? What's the matter with you, Fosna? I'm not one of your drunken Indians. Doing this to me is going to create a lot of attention. That's such a general idea. In other words, Blue Elk, we're going to make an example out of you. <laughs> We got a special attraction here tonight. Our good friend Blue Elk's gonna do an authentic Indian war dance for you. Ain't you, boy? Little music there, Maestro. Let's get out of here. Give that stick drum, boy. Dance, Stacy. Oh, he's gonna dance all right. Ain't your boy? You you're gonna dance. dance, ain't your boy? Because if you don't dance, son, I'm gonna burn all the skin off the bottom of your feet. Yeah. <laughs> a human being lying down there who also happens to be my friend. Now, you tell me, what do you want me to do? Just leave him lie there? Oh, my God. Come on, honey. This is insane. Let's get out of here. Why? He got there. I said no. Mrs. Clara, how could you do this? Dr. Alem, you're a dentist. You took an oath. Don't you dare turn away from me. Look at him. How could you possibly enjoy this? Come on, you guys aren't going to really use all of these things now, are you? Try it. If you're giving me a choice, I would just as soon quietly walk out of here and go on home. Billy, stop it! Somebody stop it! What are you, insane? All we want to do is take our friend Blue Elk and quietly walk out of here. Not this time, Billy. Oh, Posner, for God's sake, there are witnesses, hundreds of them. He's not walking out of here. Well, if that's the way it's going to be, Buster, you're going to have to club me down first. Are you ready to do that? If I have to. Damn! Somebody get the police and hurry! Just your feet against uh, all of this? Well, looks like we're just going to have to improvise. You know, I don't remember who it was, but 
Somebody one time told me that if there's absolutely no way that you can get out of taking a terrible beating, the only intelligent thing for you to do is to try to get in the first place. <laughs> I dislocated it. Oh, come on, it's just separate. Quit bellowing like such a baby. I'm set Just bring it up. This part's gonna hurt you. Yeah? Until now, it has been just a couple of broken bones. So why don't you put the gun away and back off? Tell me, son. For Posner's all born to be jackasses, if you miss me, you're going to hit one of your own men. Please, I'm asking you nice. If that'll help, why don't you just put the gun away and let's quietly go on home? I'm arresting you for assault. You have no right to hold me here. I'm a free man. I'm arresting you, too. One false move, and I'll kill you. By God, I'll kill you. Come on, don't. Please. I'm begging you. Don't think I'm kidding.
can't let you do that, Cole. My God, man, when are you gonna stop being a fool? If I let you take me in, we both know that would be a bullet in my head. Not while I'm around. Billy, I have to do this. No, Cole, I'm not gonna let you take me. the guard and the standby federal troops. Yeah, who's screaming the loudest? You want them in alphabetical order? I heard Posner's been killed. Are you sure? Yes, sir. How? Billy Jack. Well, get him. I'm afraid we can't, sir. The whole world saw it. It was clearly self-defense. I said arrest him. <laughs> Here, Colonel. You have no legal right to be here. Sorry, ma'am. We're taking our orders directly from the governor's office. This show of force is just going to fan reaction. Is that what you want? Just what are your orders? Stay in this position until Billy Jack is placed under arrest. <laughs> Everything else now it starts to rain. I don't know, Billy. Maybe I should have listened and cut back on some of those exposés. You know what I think? No. I think that your refusal to stop those exposés and give advice is kind of a cop out. Just what do you mean by that? Well, by not ever giving advice, you don't ever have the awesome responsibility of someone following your advice and making a terrible mistake, maybe getting hurt. It's kind of a nice, safe way to do it. Are you accusing me of being afraid of responsibility? In some ways, yes. Why else didn't you speak up about the exposés? I mean, after Nixon resigned, why didn't you do something about it then? Because I thought the kids were doing the right thing. Your trouble is, is that you think everybody is pure of heart and gives a damn. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you think that all you have to do is bring all these injustices out in the open and everybody's gonna rise up and do something about it. Look what happened to Kennedy after Chappaquiddick, or all the crooks with Nixon and Watergate. Things went right on, people forget. Come on. The hell with all that. The only important thing now is how can we get out of this mess without somebody getting hurt? I think you've got to try and slip out of here any way you can. It's funny, last time you were the one who couldn't wait for me to surrender. It's not funny. It's totally different this time. They're going to kill you, Billy. How many kids were shot at that Kent State and all those other... What in the hell does that have to do with anything? It has everything to do with it. If they have to force their way in here looking for me, a lot of people are going to get hurt. Now look at who's the nonviolent one. Now, I'm not being nonviolent. I'm just trying to buy a little bit of time. Besides, they wouldn't dare hurt me now. <laughs> Don't anybody move. All right, I'll surrender peaceably if I have the governor's personal word that you'll take all these troops, move off the campus, and clear out of the reservation. Those are the governor's orders. We're to pull out just as soon as you're in jail. That's the deal, Billy. You heard it personally? That's right, Billy. I was there. All right. I'll be down shortly. I came up here so fast, I forgot to bring bullets. <laughs> Come on, they wouldn't dare.
dare do something may not be much too obvious. I'm sorry, Carl, but this warrant's from the state's attorney general. He's under state custody. The hell he is. I'll take him in. No, you won't. The attorney general received orders directly from the state supreme court and gave them personally to me. I'm sorry, Carl. And I'll follow along and make sure nothing happens. He's your Stanley. Right, Good morning. All right, go ahead and take your leak. I never said I had to take a leak. Regulations. Pick it up. It may be dangerous out there in the dark. That's the funniest thing. You know, one time, I don't remember where, somebody told me that if at any time I was ever arrested and they gave me a handgun and said something about me, <laughs> Man, do you realize what they will do to us? Shut up and fan out. I'm not going out in the dark after him. Are you nuts? To hell with you. I know I hit him. Fan out! Move it! Sound and I tear out the windpipe. Now get your hand gun out and bring it up to me very easy. All right. I want the keys to these cuffs, the coil wire from this car, and the microphone. You understand? Real slow. Well, did you see anything? No, sir. Not a damn sign. Yes, there is. Looks like blood. Turn on the headlights, Ed. Swing it over here! <laughs>
And she right. does not need any help from us. Terrific dick. She can do just fine on her own if that's what she wants. Yeah. I think she has a right to, you know, voice an opinion on what she wants. Oh, right. Right. you're not you're gonna hear one baby I've never asked for one thing from one of you in this school of my life and damn it I'm gonna ask now I've decided this minute after sitting here and watching you guys I want to stop giving and I'm gonna demand that you give me five minutes of your lousy time and believe me right now it's plenty lousy I can tell you, I can promise you, if the cop that came in to this room that shot Billy Jack, I'd shoot him. <laughs> I'd shoot him. Yeah, right. I know that. But God help me, he's not here now, so I don't have to, and I can I think know. a little bit. Now, we could go out there. Some of us would get shot. A few of you would get killed. You may be just with you can dine off if you want to. Go ahead. What's a lie? You think you can make them like that, right? Dying is a big step. And if we wanted to, and if we really want to die, and if we really want to ruin this school and totally destroy it, I think we can do it just as easily tomorrow as we can tonight. And it may give us a chance to find out why we're doing this. Why, what's this happening for? My feeling is, and I know right now it doesn't mean a damn thing to any of you, but I'm going to say it anyway. I feel that right now this is our crucial test. Oh, we're all big mouths. We've got great mouths in telling about this great love we have here. And what it means, and boy, this whole school is really built on it, isn't it? I saw it tonight. It's beautiful. Just gorgeous. Well, the question is, can this great love withstand what they're doing to us out there right now? Or is that brute violence the thing that's going to overcome the world? No, you all know Danny. And you know the tremendous love and time Carol has put in to what everyone told us was an absolutely hopeless case. She has been working for over one month to try and teach him a song because he's wanted to come up here on this stage like you big guys, you big shots, and sing. Well, there may not be a platform here tomorrow. There may not be a school here tomorrow. You may not be here tomorrow. You may not be here tomorrow. Because you may decide to go out and get yourself shot. So I'm going to ask you one small favor. Can you give Danny his chance to be a big guy? And I hope to God he doesn't turn out like some of you. So, Carol, Danny, would you please come up now and please let him have his chance? I saw the ships go sailing on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw the ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning. And all the angels in heaven shall sing on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. And all the angels in heaven shall sing on Christmas Day in the morning. And all the souls on earth shall sing on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. And all the souls on earth shall sing on Christmas Day in the morning.
Thank you. I'm well aware of that, but ask for him anyway. I don't give a damn. We need some help. All right. Well, they won't pull out. We're trying to ask for a federal marshal. Has anybody gotten through the governor yet? Oh, Gene, I've been trying to get him all afternoon. No, he doesn't have time for a phone call. But look at him. He's acting like the Archangel Gabriel. So I pledge to you that while we will never provoke any confrontation... Damn, you liar! We'll never surrender one square foot of this state to any lawless anarchist. Wherever the first firebomb is thrown, wherever the first brick is thrown, wherever the first house is set on fire, then we will make our move. I have been in contact with Washington and have been promised full support. Well, so much for any hope of getting the federal marshals. And to every citizen in this state, let me be perfectly clear. We will move with everything in our power to protect all life oh, no. and property. Would you believe it? This has been Look a remote telecast direct from the governor's office here at the state capitol. God above, how can they be so stupid? No, it's not stupid. It's a well-thought-out plan. Tell him I won't be in the work for three or four more. Please, please be careful. Don't worry, for God's sakes. Why is mine so upset? Well, she's just being silly, Danny. Now, give your old dad a hug. It's got to last me a couple days. The governor's office wants verification that radicals are pouring into the school from all over the state. Verified. Verified. All right, now it's your job to cover the hill. Any kid comes up from the school, you warn him once. You fire a warning shot in the air, and then you shoot to kill. Now they got snipers all over the place out there. Is that clear? Do you understand that? Does you really expect us to shoot college kids? You're damn right. Their snipers will hit you without batting an eye. Pardon me for sounding stupid, but uh, what are we shooting them for? The medicine failed. Those bullets are killing you. says it's because you didn't respect your vision. You acted the same way after it as you did before. Grandfather is right. But we still have to stop them. They're going to try to kill Jane. Will any of you help me? Please. I can't do it alone. Military has now sealed off the school and the entire...
Please, have anything seen Danny? No. Yeah, I think I saw him running back towards the girl's door. What's going on? Or communicate directly with anyone at the school. Has Danny come through here? You mean little Danny? Yes. Yeah, well, I think I saw him go down to the bonfire. Carol, you can't go down there. I have to. I have to find Danny. Carol, please. <laughs> Now they've set a shack on fire. You better send a fire truck and more men to push them back. Right. Over. Gene Roberts at the Freedom School. I have urgent information that can stop all this. Tell the governor he's got to get on the phone now. Wasn't that a sniper? Sure looks like it. Well, why didn't you fire back? I'm not doing anything until I get my orders. Why don't you just go call an ambulance? Governor? Yes, any kind of statement from you will calm things down considerably. Would you please let me go out and tell them anything, anything direct from you? If the students draw back and seal themselves in the dormitory, then I'll pull back the militia. If not, we'll stop this at all costs. Well, you pull back your militia and I'll get the kids inside. God above, at least give me that chance. <laughs> General, there is a sniper. Lieutenant Stowe, take your squad around the hill to the other side of that wall, see if you can find that sniper. Yes, sir. What kind of buckshot are you using? That's double odd. That's equivalent to 838 caliber, sir. I know what it's equivalent to, but it'll kill deer, it'll kill those bastards.
Under authority of the Treaty of 1868, I am arresting you for being illegally on Indian land. If you resist, or if you want to continue this senseless slaughter of these unarmed students who are here under our protection, then you'll have to shoot your way through us. This is a monumental step you're taking. You give us no other choice. If this country must have another civil war, then let us start here. How is he doing? I'll notify the governor. Now we're pulling out. We should have been here tonight, old buddy. We got a couple of them. Freedom School was a symbol of everything good and right. And the American spirit. We had kids of different races, ideologies, religions, all living and working together in peace and harmony. All the kids at the school, we really want you back. Aren't you going to open it again? It's not the kids. It's the town's people. They not only supported the shooting, but if you can believe it, they were actually happy about it. to come over to this side permanently. Why? My spirit progresses so poorly on the other side. That's because you don't value your visions. You must carefully listen to them and change your life according to what they say. I understand that. But why can't I do that here? You must go back. For when people can see how someone as violent as you can change and find inner peace, then you will set a good example. After you have gone back and practiced the fourth way, then you will meet your spiritual guide. Well, how am I supposed to do that? I don't even know what the fourth way is. My friend will tell you, but you will not be able to reach the fourth way until you stop covering your weaknesses with violent acts. The fourth and highest level is when, no matter what they do to your body, they cannot touch your soul because you are so deeply into your own center. Then you see violence and anger and bullying not as threats, but as cover-up used by panicked men who are frightened and in pain. Instead of hating them, 
you truly feel sorry for their weakness and can easily turn and offer them your other cheek. Now go back and do what you must do and take Carol, for she will help you carry on the teachings. to rebuild the school. We're going to try to start other schools all over, just like you've done for us here. Instead of stopping the exposés, we've got to work harder now than ever. With Ford and Rockefeller, nothing will really change. Everyone suddenly forgot about all the urgent reforms. So we've got to keep on fighting until those reforms really happen. We've all decided, everybody, we're going to dedicate the march to you. Please come in. <laughs> 